Peace and welcome back to another Hidden Jewels. I'm your sister Zahara. And in this Hidden Jewels, I will be covering the entire chapter of Deuteronomy 32, in which I titled The Split, The Scattering, and The Return of Israel and Judah. Now, I can't cover the entire chapter of Deuteronomy 32 in this video. It's just too much. Um, so I'll have to do it in parts. And I also won't be precepting every scripture in Deuteronomy 32. Just the key verses that you guys need to get out of it. Now, many people believe, or we've been taught, that this is about this this chapter is about the nation of israel how they will transgress against the most high uh, do evil and how the lord will use a a foolish nation uh an unwise nation to provoke the children of Israel, meaning the other nations of people. But that that's just not true according to the word of God. As I always say, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now, after I went and put together the scriptures, I concluded that in this Deuteronomy chapter 32 is actually speaking to the house of Judah that would be left after the subsequent split of both houses. Now, before you jump on me and say I'm false and I'm lying and, you know, that girl done gone crazy and start passing my videos around in your little inner circles, hear the word first. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, we clearly can see that all 12 tribes, Moses is giving this song of prophecy to all 12 tribes of Israel in the wilderness. But... The Most High, when he gave this prophecy, his mind was already in the future. It was already past the split, how he would divorce the Northern Kingdom or the 10 tribes and how only one nation would be left because Israel and Judah, they became two nations. And the nation that was cut off was called Gentiles. And the only nation that is left is the house of Judah. Now, you're going to see that as I go along and read the scriptures to you. As, we go to, as I go to different scriptures, you're going to see this. You're going to realize that he's talking to the house of Judah because, because, again, the Lord's mind is already in the future, even though he's talking to all 12 tribes of Israel that are present at this time. So there were many things that the Lord gave Moses to give to the 12 tribes of Israel at, in prophecy that wasn't that wasn't meant for right then like for example kings moses prophesied about the coronation of a king in israel but israel didn't get a king until hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years you had a whole period of the judges so understand the lord could already see afar off that the whole house of israel they're gonna do evil there, there's going to be a split between both houses. I'm going to send one house off. Judah is going to be left. And that is the nation I'm dealing with. The house of Judah, we keep trying to tell y'all this, but many of y'all refuse to study. But Judah was the only one. When I say Judah, I mean Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. They made up the house of Judah. Only they were known as the children of Israel or the house 
of Israel. After the split, after the Lord divorced the 10 tribes. So in this Deuteronomy 32, when you're reading it, yes, the house of Israel, or I should say the northern kingdom, the 10 tribes, they did do a lot of these things that you're going to read. They served other gods. They did perverse. But he's really talking about that nation that was going to be left that he was dealing with after he cut off the 10 tribes. So this is the Lord projecting the future of the nation of Israel through Moses. All right, so I don't want to waste any time. Let's get right into it. Get your Bibles out, pen, paper, and take notes. Follow along, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herd, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. And the reason why this was said in the first five verses is so that when Israel would go off and do evil, they won't be able to say that the Lord was unrighteous in judging the nation for doing wickedness. No, because he already told you that these things, these curses, this it would befall you for doing evil. So just know that you're going to be judged based off your transgressions. So don't turn around and be like, oh God, so unfair. He's so mean. He's unrighteous. No, you're getting your just due. All right. Verse five. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Now we know in this verse, hey, the house of Israel or Ephraim, the 10 tribes, they did these things. They corrupted themselves. They did perversely. That is true. But who is God really speaking about? That's why it did make sense when he told all 12 tribes, because guess what? Ephraim did do these things. But again, you'll see as we read, hey, the Lord's talking about when he's only going to be dealing with Judah at some point. That nation that would be left out of the whole house of Israel, out of all 12 tribes, the nation he would be dealing with. This is who he's talking to. Okay, so let's look up some precepts for this verse five. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15. Because the apostle, the apostle Paul, he understood this. Philippians 2 and verse 15. It says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. And who is that crooked and perverse nation at this time? The Jews, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. Not the Gentiles of the 10 tribes of Israel, but Judah. Judah was that nation, that perverse and crooked nation. Let's go to Matthew 17 and verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And who did Jesus deal with when he came? When he was on this earth, 
he dealt with the house of Judah. Benjamin, Levi, Judah. Not with the ten tribes. He dealt with Judah. That's the generation he's talking about. When you go back to Deuteronomy 32 and verse 5, and it says perverse and crooked. Perverse means a turning away from right. Willfully erring, wicked, stubborn, wayward. And crooked means bent, twisted, a chorus of action that deviates from deceit, guile, and hypocrisy, which is what the, the Jews were. Okay. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and 38, 39. It says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. And these Pharisees and scribes, what, who are, what are they? They're Jews of the house of Judah. Verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So who is this evil, perverse, crooked, adulterous, which means unfaithful? What generation was this? Who is he talking to? Judah, because that's who was left. So way back in the wilderness, when that, that song of Moses that was given to all 12 tribes, even though he was talking to them at that time, his mind was already on this day and what we're reading about. That generation, that perverse generation, that adulterous generation, which was Judah, because they were the ones that were left. They were the ones that had the oracles. Matter of fact, let's go to, let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 11 and verse 12. It says, Ephraim compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit, and he eventually divorced them. But what? But Judah yet ruleth with God, and is faithful with the saints. And they were, until they also went off and became perverse, faithless, crooked, just like the house of Israel did. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. It reads, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, not all twelve tribes, you men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. So he's talking to the house of Judah. Where are the other tribes? Watch what he says, verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And what does untoward mean? It means to be perverse. To be forward. Isn't that what it said in Deuteronomy chapter 32? So Peter's telling him, hey, save yourself from these unbelieving Jews. These Jews that don't believe in Christ of the house of Judah. Hey, save yourself. You believe in the Messiah. You live holy. That's who he was talking about. Judah. Okay. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and pick it up with verse 6. Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy, thy father that have bought thee? Have he not made thee and established thee? Okay. Now, he called them foolish people and unwise. And some of you might say, yeah, but Ephraim was. Yes, they was. But the Lord's mind is already dealing. He's already, he's passed the split. And his mind is already where he knows 
he going to be just dealing with the house of Judah. They will be the only nation left. He said, do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5 and read verses 20 through 21. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, that's unwise, which have ears and see not, which have ears and hear not. He said that to Judah. Remember the other house, he cut them off. They're divorced, they're Gentiles, heathens. He ain't dealing with them. And we're talking about at that time. We're not talking about here in 2021. We're talking about at that time. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and read verses, verse seven through 14. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, of his inheritance. Uh, you let some of these teachers tell it, we ain't his portion. Verse 10, he found him in a desert land in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up a nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the kit, the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. So he's trying to get Israel to reflect. Hey, think about how I took care of you. How could you turn your back on me? How could you do this evil when I'm the one that provided for you? I'm the one that pr protected you, kept you. I'm the one that made you a nation. So this is a call for not just them, but even us today to look back and reflect and to turn back to our God. Okay. Verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And yes, Ephraim did this. But again, when you really look at this, he's talking to the house of Judah in their future. But this applies to both houses, Israel and Judah. And you will see when we get to verse 21, you will see. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 53, 1 through 3. Because it says, they, and then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 3. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty 
that we should desire him. So we know we're talking about Jesus the Christ. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and what? We esteemed him not. And who was that that didn't esteem him when Christ came? Who was the one that said, crucify him, crucify him? Who was that that rejected him? Was that the northern kingdom? No, that was the Jews. Judah, the leadership didn't esteem him. Pharisees, scribes, and all of the unbelieving Jews. It's, they did not esteem him. And when you look up this word esteem, it says to set a value on, whether high or low, of high value to prize, to regard with reverence, respect, worthy of esteem, held in high opinion and thought. But Judah rejected Christ. Not all of Judah, but especially that leadership and those unbelieving Jews under them, they rejected Christ. 1 Corinthians 10. And again, these epistles that's Paul, that Paul is writing, they're to the children of Israel. Don't let these teachers fool you and tell you, oh, he's talking to all these nations. That's so stupid. It's time for people to study the word of God. Quit listening to these teachers who keep pushing the same stale doctrine. All they do is talk, 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 talk. Yep, 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 yep. But when you bring a thousand scriptures out of the book, all of a sudden you false. You're a liar. Now you calling God a liar because this is his word. It ain't mine. I'm just reading it. Anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers. Now he's talking to the Corinthians. Why would he be telling some other nations about our fathers? Do that make sense? These Corinthians are Israelites. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that what? That rock was Christ. Then it's saying Deuteronomy 32 and verse 15, and lightly esteem the rock of his salvation. So we're talking about Jesus. Don't let these non-messianics fool you. That was Jesus. From Genesis all the, Reve all the way to Revelation, you're dealing with the Messiah. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 4 and read 10 through 12. And we're going here because it said in Deuteronomy 32 and 15, lightly esteem the rock of his salvation. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel. Who is the people of Israel at this time? The house of Judah. The 10 tribes were cut off, called Gentiles. Get out of here. You are divorced. You are no longer my wife. So who could only be Israel at this time? The house of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, that's how you know this all Israel here is Judah because it was Judah that said, crucify him. Not Zebulun, Naphtali, Gad, Dan, Asher, Judah, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. 
This is the stone or rock which was set at naught of you builders. And this is the leadership among Israel of Judah, Pharisees, the scribes. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any of them. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we much must be saved. It said, neither is there salvation in any other. So when you go back to Deuteronomy 13 and 15, you know that the rock of his salvation, that's Jesus the Christ. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. And read verse 20, verses 26 through 28. It reads, Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, verse, verses 26 through 28. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set of snares, they set a trap. They catch men as a cage is full of birds. So are their houses full of deceit. Wherefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. Didn't he say that in Deuteronomy 32? And who is he talking to here? Judah. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause. The cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Matthew 13, and verses 13 through 15. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are, are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and she should be converted and I should heal them. It said for this people's heart, that's their mind, is waxed gross. And when you look up this gross, it's thick, fat. Then he said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, and verse 15, but Jeshurun wax fat and kick thou waxing fat and grown what thick. Well, that's what Jesus is saying right here in Matthew 13. You couldn't tell the house of Judah anything. You try to tell, he was trying to tell these leaders the word, these unbelieving Jews the word, but their head was just waxing fat and thick with so much falsehoods and lies, traditions, doctrines. All right, y'all, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 13 and read verses 16 through 19. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, that rock is Christ, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And yes, like I said, the 10 tribes, they did these things. And that's why the Lord cut them off at that time and he divorced them. Get out of here. You ain't my wife. Give my name back. You a heathen. Get out of here. But who he's talking to here is the future house that would be left. Judah. 
Okay, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8 and read verse 3, 6, 9, and 10. Because he said, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Ezekiel 8 and 3. And he put forth the form of, um, and he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Didn't we read that in Deuteronomy 32 and 16? And this is what Ezekiel is seeing regarding Judah. Not the ten tribes, because they gone. Judah. Verse 6. He said furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations. Didn't he say in verse 16, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, talking about the house of Judah, that I shall go far from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Verse 9 and 10. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And he's talking to Judah here. All you got to do is check the timeline during Ezekiel. When dealing with the house of, with the northern kingdom, they were cut off. And Judah knew better. Jeremiah chapter 44 two through three. The reason why we going here is because it said they provoked them to jealousy with strange gods. They sacrificed them to devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up and whom your fathers feared not. Now watch this, Jeremiah 44, two through three. Now, this is Jeremiah dealing with the house of Judah, who could only be called the house of Israel, not the other kingdom, they gone. Whew. Cut them off, divorce them. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. What happened to the other tribes? And behold, this day they are desolation and no man dwelleth therein because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger and that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not, neither they, ye, nor your fathers. Didn't he just say that in Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 17? Provoke me to anger with other gods who their fathers knew not. And he was talking again to Judah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 14. 19 and 21. And again, let me say this again. That does not mean in Deuteronomy chapter 32, I'm not saying that this wasn't applicable to the other house as well. What I'm telling you is that the Lord mind was already projected into Israel's future. Past the split and only dealing with Judah. So, yes, a lot of this was applicable 
to the house of Israel. That's how they got judged. But he's dealing, he's talking about one nation that would be left. Jeremiah 14, 19 and 21. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? What about the other, other 10? And why is he asking this? Because that's what happened to the 10 tribes. He rejected them. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Has thou so loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us and there is no healing for us? We look for peace and there is no good. And for the time of healing and behold, trouble. Verse 21. Watch this. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Us who? Judah. He said, don't abhor us. Because why? In Deuteronomy 32, verse 19, it says, and when the Lord saw it. So when he saw Judah doing this evil, just like the 10 tribes did, it made him abhor them. He hated them. And that's why Judah ended up going into captivity. You'll see that as we go down. We'll go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very fraud generation. And we just went over that back up in verse 5. Children in whom in whom is no faith, no faith. Let's go to Luke chapter nine and verse 41. And it reads, and Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation. Didn't he just say in verse 20 of Deuteronomy 32, they are a very fraud generation, which also means perverse. Children in whom is no faith. And what did Jesus just say here? Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Faithless children in whom there is no faith. How long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And you will see all throughout the New Testament because Judah is left as the nation of Israel. They struck, they had no faith to the point where they had the Messiah crucified. No faith. They did not believe. With all that law, with all the oracles, still didn't believe. So he's talking to Judah. Now let's read verse 21 in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And then I'm going to cut it here and I'll pick it up with the second part next time. Verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. This is the key. This is why I titled this lesson, The Split, Scattering, and the Return of Israel and Judah. Because that's what this chapter is about. The split, Israel is cut off, and they're going to become, well, let me read it. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. This verse right here is the key. This not a people in this foolish nation is not talking about other nations. It's not talking about Japheth. It's not talking about Ham. Is talking about someone else here. This is the key. And it said foolish nation. Foolish people. Not peoples. Not nations. This is the key. To understanding what this chapter is about. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. 
and verse 19. Because Paul understood this because of his ministry. And in his ministry, he was sent to the this foolish people. He was sent to this not a people. And we're going to find out who it is from the Bible. Not your teacher's false doctrine. From the Bible. Because guess what? God is greater than your preacher. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know what Israel? Judah. The house of Judah that was left. She still retained her marriage name at this time. Not the 10 tribes. They didn't retain the name of Israel because she got divorced. But I say, did not Israel know? And they were supposed to know because they were supposed to be the ones, according to Hosea chapter 11 and verse 12, that was faithful with the saints, that was supposed to rule with God, had those oracles, had the written law. They were still his people. First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Did we just read that in Deuteronomy 32? So Paul got some understanding. He know who this nation is because he talking to them. He know exactly who he talking to. And we going to find out who it is. Now pass this around. <laughs> pass this video around too. Just like you did my other hidden Jew. Y'all better be lucky I ain't got some of these social media platforms because I will help you pass them. <laughs> Y'all don't know me. Isaiah 7 and verse 8. We're looking at this not a people. It reads, for the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim, we're talking about the 10 tribes. Ephraim was the head tribe, the umbrella tribe that represented all 10 tribes. Shall Ephraim, not Judah, Ephraim be broken that it, talking about Ephraim, that it be not a people. Did it say Japheth? Did it say Ham? No, it said Ephraim will be broken that it be not a people. But you don't understand. My pastor said that when you look at that, that's talking about Japheth. Because according to Genesis, they, oh, shut up. It said, Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. Just like we read in Deuteronomy 32. And Paul quoted that. Okay, let's go to Hosea chapter 1. And read verses 6 through 7. It just work your nerves, man, when people just refuse to open this Bible and study. I've never heard so many people say, what the book say? But then when you show them what the book say, they don't believe it. So you know what? That let me know, y'all liars. No, it's what the doctrine say. It's what the path to say. That's what you need to say. <laughs> I know y'all, some of y'all mad right now that's secretly listening. Like, I can't stand it. I want to knock her hat off her head. <laughs> Hosea 1, verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, he's talking to Hosea, call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. That's Ephraim. So Hosea is seeing what Isaiah is seeing. But I will utterly take them away. Talking about Ephraim. They're going to be not a people. 
But verse 7, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. That's why when you read all throughout the script, all of the prophets in the New Testament, you'll notice that it just mostly dealing with Judah because it's just what he said. Verse 9, then said God, call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. He said this to the ten tribes, not Judah. That's who he's talking to here. They are the not a people. They are the ones that became the foolish people. This is a way of the Lord bringing back the house of Israel. That's what you're looking at in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 24 through 26. Because Paul quoted Hosea because he understood. He understood that. He understood the mystery of the Gentiles unlike your preacher. Even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. What Gentiles, Paul? Who? Because they said it's Japheth, according to Genesis 10. But who is it? Verse 25. As he saith also in Hosea. Are you talking about Hosea? Didn't we just read, leave from there? As he also saith in Hosea, in Hosea, not Genesis 10, Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, because it was God's plan to bring back this foolish people, this not a people, back into the fold of Israel, back into the commonwealth of Israel with Judah. The two sticks from Ezekiel 37, not the three sticks, not four sticks, not five, two, two sticks. Which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, you Gentiles. There shall they be called the children, children of the living God. Verse 27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Not Jacob, not the Hamites, Israel. And not spiritual Israel either. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So even Paul understood, hey, according to, that's what I'm doing. I'm helping to bring back these two sticks because I understood what Hosea was saying. I understood what Moses was saying. I'm going to bring back both of these houses. But through Judah's fall, through Judah being disobedient, through Judah rejecting the Messiah, that's going to allow these Gentiles, that's going to allow this northern kingdom, these Ephraimites that I cut off, that I divorced, it's going to allow me to bring them back. All 12 tribes. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Because even Peter wrote to these Gentiles who he called strangers. He wrote to them because of that encounter he had with Cornelius. And Cornelius was not an Italian. Your preacher is a liar. The Bible said he was a centurion of the Italian band, not an Italian man. You need to fix your glasses and read correctly or put some on. We just sick of it. 
Everybody talking, but ain't nobody flipping scripts. Now pass that around in your little inside circle. First Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. Like the book of Galatians. He told me the Israelites in Galatia. But my pastor told me that the Galatians was Japheth. Your pastor's a liar. Now, why would heathens be scattered in their own land? Do that make sense? To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 through 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. A peculiar people that you should shew forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who is it? It's Ephraim. It's the ten tribes, not Japheth. which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hell, even Peter understood Hosea and Deuteronomy 32. That's who Moses, that's what this prophecy was given. That's what he was talking about. Israel, you gonna go off. You gonna do evil. You gonna transgress against me, both houses. But Judah, it's gonna be through you. It's gonna be through your nation. You're going to fall. You're going to do evil. But that's going to allow me to bring back these ten tribes. Back into the fold. The other sheep I have. It's going to allow me to bring them back. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I can't do the whole the whole chapter. I'll be here forever. But I just want to put that on y'all mind. Some of these teachers and preachers. But it just, it just aggravates me. They just refuse to study God's word. And they know it's in here. They refuse to look at it. Now, on this verse 21, let me go to Ezekiel chapter 37. I just feel led to go here. Because he said, we know he's talking to Judah right there in verse 21 in Deuteronomy 32. And he said, I'm going to provoke you with this not a people and this foolish nation. Now, if you understand the history of the split, you know that Israel, the house of Israel, Judah, they split into two nations, two whole nations. That's why he could say, that's why he could say with a foolish nation, not nations with an S, a nation. Ezekiel 37. And verse, and verse 22, it says, and I will make them one nation. We're talking about Israel and Judah. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more. What? Two nations. Two. 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 Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. And that's going to be Christ to do that. To bring us back Israel and Judah. That's what you're looking at here in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And as you go along, you're going to see where Judah sent off, scattered to the four corners. You're going to see all that. Because many people think that the ten tribes were scattered to the four corners. No. According to Isaiah 11, Judah was scattered to the four corners. And you're going to see after that how the Lord is going to bring both these houses back together towards the end. That's what this is about. It has absolutely nothing to do with any outside nations. You may have one verse where he mentions the enemy of the other nations briefly. But other than that, he's talking about the split. 
the scattering and the eventual return of both houses. That's what this chapter is about. That's what God was looking at when he had Moses prophesy this. Let me say it one more again. We know in this Deuteronomy chapter 32, we know that Ephraim did a lot of this here was written, provoke God, made them gods. You know, they made that cow with Jeroboam. And we know they did that. But God's main focus here is in the future. Looking at when he would be dealing with the house of Judah. Okay, so I hope that made sense. I tried to do my best to put it together. This stuff ain't always easy to search these scriptures out and then put it together in a way that y'all can understand it. But I hope y'all got some understanding. Be like the Bereans, steady. Be a student of God's word. We don't have enough students. Everybody want to talk. Everybody want to voice their opinion, but no nobody want to study. That's the problem. That's how you fall into falsehoods. That's how you get caught and stuck up in doctrines. Because you ain't studying to show yourself approved. And you got to know if the Lord tell you to study and he tell you to meditate and you're not doing it, you do realize he going to test you. He going to let false doctrines come. He going to let lies come. And you going to get took. Your foot going to get caught because you don't study. Y'all keep playing with the Lord. Thank you, playing. All right. Well, with that said, I will say shalom.